In the distant future of the year 2007, Earth's most powerful soldiers are Earth's last chance against mind-controlled zombies that have taken over half the planet and are gaining ground every day. Who are these soldiers? What's controlling the zombies? Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the History of the Spirals. <laughs> In 1985, Bandai released the first of a series of high-end action figures called Special Force Group Spiral Zone. The figures were significant not only because they were 6-inch scale with cloth outfits possessing a high degree of detail, lots of accessories, and 30 points of articulation, but more important than that, it was the brainchild of Kunio Okawara and Kazuhisa Kondo. First try. Kunio Okawara was a robo-designing rock star, having worked on designs most notably for Gundam, the headlining mecha of the gritty real robot era of giant robot mecha design. Zabunguru Dugram and Armored Trooper Votoms, all a natural progression from the focus of his work on robots at war, getting dirty, down in the trenches, and all the horrors that come with that in the near future of terrible future wars. Special Force Group Spiral Zone was conceptual, basically taking all those giant robot gear concepts and shrinking them down to human size. The artwork and figures were about imagining a futuristic special mission force fighting a dirty war in a dark future where technology has changed what war looks like and how it is fought, but not the essence and horrible reality of the emotional and physical cost of war itself. The figures straddled the line between model kit and action figure. They were more detailed and delicate than would have necessarily been appropriate for little kid hands or rough play. And to further emphasize that point, there was no animated series to support the line. Back in the United States, Tonka Toys were looking for the next big thing, having already successfully imported and rebranded Machine Robo from Japan as the GoBots. Tonka acquired the license for Special Force Group Spiral Zone and began development of a new mythology hoping to emulate their GoBot success. This time, however, they would bypass the existing figures for all new proprietary designs that they could tie more directly to the mythology that was being developed for the animated series that would then be used to sell all those new toys. Spiral Zone debuted in 1987 with a rockin' theme song that delivered the minimum amount of exposition you were going to need in order to even engage with what was happening on screen. Tarantino-style, out-of-order storytelling is one thing, but the pilot episode was aired as the fourth episode in the series. And the revelation about how the titular villain Overlord even conquered half of planet Earth, where the Spiral Zone came from, how it was set up, how Overlord managed to beat the combined armies of the entire planet, and why, ultimately, he didn't conquer the entire planet, happens in episode 54 out of 65. <laughs> the spiral zone is dark, clouded regions of Earth that form a spiral pattern around the planet. It is created and maintained by a series of zone generators. Anyone inside the spiral zone becomes a mind-controlled zombie. Their eyes turn yellow, they develop lesions on their skin, and they do whatever Overlord tells them to. It's not a permanent condition. Anyone taken out of the spiral zone reverts back to normal within minutes. And this is the central conflict of the series, the heroic Zone Riders, the aforementioned Earth's most powerful soldiers, an internationally diverse cadre of specialists sporting Zone survival suits made from a very limited amount of a very rare material, enter the Spiral Zone to rescue people and destroy existing Zone Generators. Outside the Spiral Zone, where regular Earth life just proceeds like normal and people are encouraged to keep out of arm's reach of the dark fog of the Spiral Zone, the Zone Riders fight Overlord and his Black Widow troops from placing new Zone Generators to expand the reach of the Spiral Zone. Make no mistake, for whatever flaws the animated series or its presentation have, for whatever specific aesthetic concerns there might be over the action figures, this is a dark, terrible, post-apocalyptic future where there is no clear indication that the good guys will ever or even can win. They are already massively outnumbered, they are fighting against technology that no one even really understands, and the ongoing interpersonal conflicts of real life and free will keep getting in the way of making any real progress. This is Walking Dead before Walking Dead, but the zombies have an actual leader who knows exactly what he is doing and is actively working to convert everyone on the planet into his followers. All of the major cities are controlled by the bad guys. That's a big deal. That's a revolutionary concept, a dark, foreboding, revolutionary concept for a cartoon intended to sell action figures. 
But that was the whole point, sell the toys. Like Bandai before them, Tonka released a line of 6-inch action figures with cloth outfits and removable armor as well as additional accessory packs and vehicles that were all modeled after the designs that Tonka had modified from the Japanese originals. The figures and accessories were much more simplified in terms of design and construction intended to be sold at a lower price point and to a younger audience that would actually play with them. Far less articulation, but a more durable construction. Fewer accessories, less detail, but more variety. Both the heroic Zone Riders and the evil Black Widows were represented. Tonka also produced the Zone Riders Zone Rider, the signature unicycle transportation, as well as the Black Widows Bullwhip, sporting eight total wheels. How can humanity stand a chance against Overlord if we can't even win the wheel wars? Additional support was provided by DC Comics, who produced a four-issue comic in 1987 written by Michael Fleischer with art by comics legend Carmine Infantino. It served to flesh out or clarify some of the narrative issues that were overlooked in the cartoon or that may have occurred due to the strange out-of-order nature of the storytelling. As with all toy-based brands, if the toys aren't selling, the cartoon's not getting renewed. 1987 was a very dense year for toy stuffs. An original concept with strong designs wasn't enough. You had to have flawless execution to survive a field that was already packed with Transformers, GoBots, He-Man, G.I. Joe, Star Wars, Air Raiders, Bone Age, Visionaries, Robotech, Centurions, Mask, Ghostbusters, Nintendo, and Sega. Not to mention this game I invented where you bounce a Nerf football off the side of the house. Spiral Zone was released on VHS in 1987 while the show was still on the air. Each cassette featured two episodes, but only three cassettes were released. The entire 65-episode series was released nearly 20 years later in 2006, unofficially, but blessed by series supervising director Peter DeSell. Peter provided his original copies of each of the episodes, and the DVD collection was sold on the now-defunct SpiralZone.com. In 1991, Tonka was assimilated by Hasbro, adding their essence and all of their licenses to their own. As of this video, there are no known plans to revive the line, Probably for the best, as Hasbro has a lot of irons in the fire right now. I'm sure they are satisfied with the amount of product they're moving. Why add to that? What a headache, right? God. Darkness has fallen on the victims of the Zone. Our world calls for courage, literally. A guy named Dirk Courage, the leader of the Zone Riders. Peace and freedom we must own. We will fight on our honor. What is right, we'll defend. Fight the Zone, Zone Riders. Earth's most powerful soldiers are Earth's last chance against the spiral zone. Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe. If you're not already a subscriber, share this video. And if you're in the position to help the channel grow, please take a moment and check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash toy galaxy. And uh, just real quick, I, uh, I want to do a quick reader mail section. Do we have, we have time for this? Uh, this one is from Brandon in Lexington, Kentucky. Brandon writes, hey, Dan and Greg, love the show, uh, especially Dan in the photo booth. Have you guys done an episode about Spiral Zone yet? You should, by the way. Uh, J. Michael Straczynski wrote the pilot under the pet, pen name Fetus Gray. Not many people know that. This is, uh, it's not funny anymore. <laughs> it's not funny anymore. Some people would say it was never funny. No. <laughs> <laughs>